Let's welcome in our morning guest. Avinash Gorashkar is now joining us. Gorang Shah is also with us and Vishal B. Malkan is also joining us this morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Gorang, let's uh, start with you. Uh, what are your calls? Well, from um, the investment perspective, we have uh, revised our target upwards on Apollo tires and uh, we have a conviction that with the uptick in uh, the new uh, product uh, lineup and of course uh, the new launches from various two-wheeler, three-wheeler, four-wheeler and commercial vehicles, you are going to see the new order market uptick to gain momentum and equally robust is the replacement market. The export market remains quite attractive. In terms of input cost, well, we don't see any major fluctuation on the rubber prices on the higher side. And we expect the margins to remain intact and even improve going forward from here on. So we have a buy call on the polo tires and uh, we are positive on uh, public sector banks and private sector banks both as well. Like you rightly mentioned a while back, we have Access Bank, uh, we have Yes Bank, we have RBL Bank, Federal Bank coming out with numbers today, tomorrow. Uh, we are positive on uh, Bank of Baroda, Pankaj, and uh, we maintain our positive stance uh, right from the levels of 130, 140. Our conservative target stands at about 185, and if the numbers are better, because there have been major changes in the management of Bank of Baroda, and of course, it is one of the public sector banks which was heavily provided for as far as the worsening GNPL situation is concerned. So we expect a steady improvement, and if that is the case, then we will revise our target upwards from 185, which is as of now. Avinash, what are your calls? Uh, Pankaj, we have three investment calls. The first one is on a specialty chemical company called Nosil. Uh, we believe that, uh, you know, as far as the rubber chemical space is concerned, Nosil is a market leader and uh, has been showing a compounded growth of almost 12 to 15 percent over the last two to three years. More importantly, you know, with uh, anti-dumping duty coming on rubber chemicals, I think the company is well positioned in the local market. This is for Nosil, right? Yeah, Nosil. National Organic Chemical Industries? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the 75 rupee stock, yeah, right? So, basically, yeah. here, earnings growth as well as the kind of headwinds we are seeing, uh, you know, from the tyre space, as Gaurang pointed out, I think uh, they are definitely going to see good amount of traction on the earning side. So here we have a one year target of around 105. Uh, the second stock is a mid cap sugar company called KM Sugars. Uh, the management has clearly mentioned that they are out of the CDR now. And more importantly with sugar prices on an uptrend output falling and I think clearly in terms of the profitability compared to a profit of 11 crores last year full year, uh, they have already made a profit of 15 crores in the first half. So our sense is that this could be a good risk reward, uh, you know, kind of bet for small investors getting into this stock at this point of time. Uh, we have a target of around 50 over the next 12 months. And finally, in the frontline, uh, you know, infra space, we like NBCC. It's a come bonus stock. Uh, we believe that not only the coming budget, but even the railway budget could spring a positive surprise. Uh, already the order book visibility is extremely strong strong at around 75,000 crores. So here we have a, a target price of around 310 before the stock goes ex bonus. Vishal, what are your calls? I will go with uh, two buy calls and the first one would be VDL Vedanta and I will go with future levels with a uh, stop loss of 238. We are looking at a target of 260, 265 in the short term. And of course, uh, if it goes beyond 6, 265, we can even hold for medium term where we can look at targets of 295. And second one, I'm looking from the banking sector and especially from PSU banks, the strongest I can see is Oriental Bank and it has a good chart set up on daily as well as weekly with good volumes. So I'll go with the buy on that with a stop of 113 for targets of uh, 125. Picks coming in from Vishal. Let's quickly do a roundup of a few stocks we'll be watching out for uh, on news developments. Uh, we've got NHPC that is going X dividend today. It's giving a dividend of one rupee, uh, seventy peso a share, and the stock has had a great run. Let's see how it reacts to um, being X dividend and giving that uh, dividend out. Uh, then uh, there were some revisions made by the BSE, and uh, some scripts have been put into the D to T segment. Uh, effective from today, which is January 19, we have uh, these stocks being added in the T2T segment, which include Treehouse, Simhadi Sugars, uh, um, Hindustan Organic Chemicals and Atlas Cycles. All of these stocks uh, will be put in the T2T segment. Sridham EPC's board will be meeting today to issue shares to bankers uh, and we have uh, Sipla. It is looking to sell 100% equity in 4M Pro Pack for about 13 and a half crore rupees. So these will be the stocks we'll be watching out for on some news developments. 
Some companies will also be reacting, Anisha, to their results and uh, they would be reacting today. So KPIT Technology declares numbers post-market hours. Profits grew up by about 2%, so about 73-odd crores versus about 72 crores. That was a QOQ number and the total income at about 831. The EBITDA was slight bit lower and the overall EBITDA margins, which came in at 10%, also disappointed. But one has to say that numbers are in line. Outlook is decent. Yes, there was a little bit of miss on the margin side. Hudson Agro. Uh, they also declared Q3 numbers, very, very strong set of numbers, 63% growth, 40% was already something which the street was expecting, but uh, the PAT number came in much above that. Total income came in about 2% higher than estimates at about 946. The EBITDA was close to around 88 crores and the EBITDA margins came in at 9.3%. Overall, strong set of numbers from Hudson Agro. International paper AP, uh, APPM uh, Q3 declared their numbers and the paper companies, uh, at least the first one that is reporting, continues to show that realizations on paper are higher with profits growing about 45% led by a good EBITDA growth of around 25-26%. So 55 uh, crores as far as the EBITDA is concerned, good numbers. Saskin Communication, if you look at the numbers on the face of it, you feel that the numbers are good uh, with PAT growing by about 9.6 crores. But if you look at the EBITDA margins, it seems to be very, very poor. Uh, it was another income of about 10 crores, which led that number of 12.9. So we just need to get further details about what that other income was. Agrotech numbers, again, pointing out towards good growth. 29% higher number on the profit front uh, at about 8 crores. Total income came in at 208 crores and the margins came in at 8.5. Steady numbers, they have been growing, they continue to grow. All right, in big earnings to watch out for today, a slew of private sector banks are coming out with earnings. Koranga, your view on Axis Bank, um, uh, Yes Bank and Federal Bank, all of these stocks have seen good up move in the last three, four sessions. Uh, do you think they're good for more? How could earnings uh, impact the stock price movement? So morning, Amisha. Well, we do have a coverage on all the three names that you mentioned, Axis, Yes Bank and Federal Bank including Ujjivan uh, that was mentioned by Pankaj a while back. Uh, that's the NBFC, MFC, if you will. So uh, our sense is that for Axis Bank, uh, the numbers are going to be a shade better than what the street estimates. And uh, our focus is going to be largely on the verbatim given by the management in terms of the recovery process, watch list, and their strategy to improve those numbers going forward from here on. Undoubtedly, with uh, our view is that the rates are likely to come down. Reserve Bank of India is likely to cut rate at least once by 31st March 2017. If the domestic data points are supportive and the elbow room exists, then maybe twice. But even then, we expect uh, the loan book growth on across verticals to have a steady growth. Uh, for Yes Bank, well, I have no doubts whatsoever. Like Indusind Bank, 18 straight quarters. I think this particular mid-cap private sector bank is also going to perform equally well. And we have a positive coverage over there as well. For Federal Bank, I think what is going to be interesting is to look at the uh, NIMS and the margins. Uh, and uh, my view is uh, that uh, you are going to see a steady growth over there as well. So, and you know, um, uh, there's one particular theme that you have to follow and keep in mind. That if you expect the economy to do good, then that's going to be supportive with the strong backbone and that's going to be banking and financials. So yes, we are positive on banking, financials, NBFCs, but you've got to be selective over there as well. All right, be selective, but uh, Gorang likes financials. Uh, uh, Vishal, uh, the oil and gas pack was quite weak uh, yesterday and did drag the markets down. Now look at the heavyweight Reliance. Ever since its earnings, it's tumbled quite severely and uh, that there was a big gap down and uh, the, now the prices are very far away from that gap. Uh, what would you do with Reliance Industries? Do you think the markets have the strength to take out new highs unless heavyweights like Reliance Industries and even ITC perform? Yeah, of course, markets have made new highs without the support of Reliance in the last few years. And if you see, Reliance has been trading in a typical range of between 800 and uh, 1000, 1050 in the last uh, three to four years. And same levels, it is retracing back. So there's nothing great about Reliance. It's trading in that range. And I, I would not look at Reliance right now till it trades above 1100 on a weekly closing basis. Uh, there's nothing much to do in Reliance as a, as a, a positional or a momentum trade. And as far as ITC is concerned, I would look at, uh, again, in a kind of a range trade, but slightly better than Reliance because the monthly charts are still bullish. So about 260, 265, it would give a good breakout and we look at targets of around 10 to 15 plus percent plus on from the, those levels. 
Gorang, what will be your view on uh, names like PowerGrid, LNT, BHEL? Suddenly, you are seeing you know some sort of good buying into these names, backed up by volume increase as well as delivery buying. So on BHEL, we have a decisive reduced recommendation, and in the cap goods engineering space, which is also associated with power transmission, distribution equipment, uh, medical science equipment as well, like Siemens. As a matter of fact, we are positive. LNT, uh, Siemens, ABB, Case International. Uh, power Grid, REC, Power Finance Corporation, amongst power generation names, we are positive on Tata Power and NTPC. And my sense is that uh, the finance minister focus is by and large going to be led by the Agri, with large uh, budgetary allocation towards there, improving the uh, uh, you know uh, productivity and of course focus as to how farmers get paid for the produce. Uh, 24 by 7 power, so that's going to be a focus again. Uh, development of roads in terms of improvement of infrastructure, so you will have, and of course, we have the minister on record, Mr. Nitin Gadkari, who has requested for a large budgetary allocation towards connectivity and building roads in semi urban and rural India. So, yes, we are positive on all these names, and our sense is that, uh, well, on the budgetary uh, announcement also, these sectors are going to remain in focus. Pankaj. Right. Uh, Avinash, what will be your view? Do you think infra or cap good related stories are now overweight? Yeah, definitely, Pankaj. I think uh, in the coming budget, I think infrastructure and capital goods should be given a significant boost. And I think uh, uh, my sense is I think the large players like Larson and Tubro, BHL, or for that reason, even the road companies like IRB uh, typically should get a larger share of the uh, you know outlay allocations. And this is definitely going to benefit these companies. I think already uh, as far as IRB or LNT is concerned, you know the order book visibility is extremely strong. I think execution is going to be the watchword. And I think uh, clearly you know capital goods and uh, road companies should be in focus. I think these would be the sectors which obviously the government would like to spend more and uh, get a kind of fillip for the GDP growth and the overall macro uh, kind of you know uh, improvement in the economy right and uh, what will be your top picks would you stick with uh, you know traditional cap good companies or names like ntpc power grid which are you know slow and steady winners no, I think uh, I would uh, also look at Power Grid as well as REC. You know, distribution companies have moved up significantly, but here the uh, benefit is that these are well uh, capitalized companies. Dividend yields are very good. So apart from uh, Larsen and Tubro from the pure capital goods and the defense space, uh, I think something like a REC or maybe a Power Grid also should be accumulated. I would not be surprised that some further incentives for both power generation and power distribution comes in this budget. Right. Uh, Vishal, what's your call on uh, Power Grid? It's a name which has done very well, even NTPC. I would say Power Grid is trading well in the last uh, few days and it has traded across the resistance of 195 and trading above that and sustaining above that. Weekly charts have also broken up. The momentum is on the side, on the bullish side. So definitely there's some more room and I look at targets around 220 to 225 in the next few trading weeks. Right. Uh, Gorang, you've already given your view on Ujjivan Financial. Just wanted to understand how important will it be for the MFI sector, how Ujjivan reports? Well, Pankaj, interesting comments from the management of uh, SKS Microfinance, earlier now known as Bharat Financials, about uh, three weeks back. And uh, their uh, statement was that the recovery process over the last uh, at least fortnight or three weeks post the demonetization has actually picked up momentum. And uh, there is not as significant impact as one had uh, envisaged of demonetization. For uh, Ujjivan, well, uh, uh, the recovery process is good and there is also a tail build of that payment bank license. So we are positive on that as well. Gorang, I'll just come back to you. Markets are opening first trades on your screen. Uh, ICICI Bank is up 30 paisa. Axis Bank results today is down 2 rupees. ONGC is flat with a negative bias. Tata Motors is on the positive side. Tata Steel about 1 rupee here and there. Uh, SBI absolutely on the flattish side. Infosys is uh, absolutely flat and HUL is down close to about 3 rupees. Startup power 78.79. So about 26,000 shares traded. Nifty is down 6 points. Sensex is absolutely flat and Bank Nifty is down 0.1%. Bank of Baroda down about uh, a quarter of a percent. Orbindo Pharma, they've got a tentative approval. Markets don't react to tentative approvals, but it went up yesterday. Maybe it's up another 3 rupees or continuing that momentum. Sun Pharma down about 3 rupees. Grassim absolutely flat. Asian down about a quarter of a percent and Kotak Mahindra Bank down about uh, half, a, half a rupee or so. HDFC Limited, 7 rupees down. Indescent Bank, 1,228. Sipla, absolutely flat. C Entertainment, 2 rupees down. 
Dr. Reddy's 23, 24 rupees uh, on the higher side. KPIT Tech, that's reacting to the numbers. Numbers, uh, actually, the revenue was in line, but one has to say that uh, the margins disappointed. Uh, maybe that's why it's down about 4, 4.5%. Four that's a company which is reacting to results. Uh, international paper, uh, or, you know, the first paper company to declare numbers, is up around 2, 2.5%, 343 for international paper APPM. Uh, Saskin is down close to 3%. Remember, numbers were driven by higher other income, and maybe that's the reason why it's on the lower side. Agrotech, good set of numbers. Volumes are yet to pick up, so that's about 4% on the uh, higher side, but volumes, one would say, is yet to pick up. Hutterson Agro Products is up about uh, 4%. That's also a company which uh, declared uh, its numbers. So that's a company which declared numbers, but again, volumes are just 2,500 shares. Sridham EPC, it's a stocks in news. It's up around 2, 2.5%, 23,000 shares traded for uh, Sridham EPC. Supply is uh, flat with a positive bias, so no major uh, move over there, but it's up around 0.2%, 582. Let's look at NHPC. They went, uh, they are going X dividend today. So it's down about 6% or so. It's exactly reacting to the dividend news. NHPC is down about 1.8, 1.9. But uh, if you're looking at the screen, uh, you know, don't worry. It's just a technical adjustment uh, which is happening in. In terms of some other gainers, Uttam Galva Steel is up about 9%. News reports suggest that there is a stake sale. Uh, which may happen into Uttam Galva. Maybe that's why it's up around uh, 9 to 10%. MBL infrastructure is also in news. It's up around 4%. Tata LXC, second day in a row, is doing pretty well. So it's up around 2% right now. 1546 for Tata LXC. But don't forget that it was up around uh, 5 to 6% uh, yesterday as well. Syntex is also up 3%. There is a call which is coming uh, from IDFC. Anisha, any names that you can pick up uh, on the volume side? Well, uh, there are a few steel stocks, uh, the second round ones that are buzzing today. Mori Espat, Uttamgala Steel, up 10, 10%. So big moves coming into some of these counters. Uh, then some of the high beta names, uh, Syntex uh, Industries up 2.5%, uh, JP Associates up 1.5%. Uh, we're seeing uh, Bajaj Hindustan up 1%. Um, BHEL continues with its uh, strong up move from a day earlier. Uh, Tata ELXI is also higher by about 2%. Um, on the losing end, uh, you mentioned uh, NHPC, that remains weak, and uh, KPIT. Ujjivan Financial Services ahead of its earnings also lower, and some profit taking being seen in India Bulls Real Estate and Access Bank as well. So these are some of the stocks uh, that are facing as, uh, a little bit of uh, pressure. Now, um, I wanted to come to you, uh, Vishal, on uh, some of the PSU uh, names, because uh, yesterday we saw uh, down moves coming into some of these counters. What is your view on Gale, on REC and Engineers India? Okay, I, I'll go with Gale first. And the Gale uh, has uh, an important resistance around the levels of around 450. So that would be a, a big balance for Gale. If once it crosses that, then we can look at a good move from there up to 500, 520. So the, right now it is resisting there on daily as well as weekly charts. So I would look at exiting my positions if I'm long in Gale and again by above 450 if it breaks out above those levels. And the second one would be REC. I think that is doing better and it has broken about the important resistance of 135 and it's sustaining about that. I look at buying opportunities and look at targets of around 160 to 65 in the next few trading weeks and we'll put, put a stop loss of around 132. All right, REC and Gale. Um, what would you do with uh, a stock like Tara Motors, uh, Avinash? Uh, we've seen a very good up move coming in to Tara Motors. Uh, the JLR sales numbers were also good. Um, where do you think this stock is headed? No, I think, uh, Anisha, I think Tata Motors definitely looks to be a good uh, risk-reward ratio bet because I think uh, my sense is not only the JLR part of the business, but even the domestic business has started picking up. In fact, now uh, with the launch of the Hexa uh, yesterday, I think uh, clearly markets are going to closely watch how this vehicle performs. It's a higher-end product which is going to compete with the Toyota Innova. And our sense is that if this product takes off, then I think uh, we could see a good kind of bump up in volumes in the domestic UV side of the business. I would presume that uh, you know any decline or even at the current levels if investors have a longer term kind of perspective they should definitely look at Tata Motors because this is one stock which is definitely looking very good on valuations and where earnings growth for FY18 would be pretty strong. Okay, so uh, favorable on Tara Motors. Uh, Vishal, uh, what do you do with the bank Nifty? The bank Nifty has been outperforming uh, the index Nifty. Uh, what are the levels you're watching out for? 
I'm looking at Bank Nifty to trade above uh, 19,300 uh, for a uh, for a further up move, which would lead to 19,750. But uh, looking at some of the major results today, uh, private banks, I think there should be some volatility, and if if it uh, cracks down, then 18,900 would be a good support to buy overall. I'll definitely look at buy on dips uh, as a, as a strategy. Goranga, what do you do with the Tata LXC? Do you track that company? In two days, it's up around 8-9%. Well, not only two days. I think for the entire year or so, or maybe more than that, Pankaj, it has been actually an outperformer. And uh, unfortunately, we have not covered that stock, so I would refrain from commenting on that. Avinash, do you cover Tata LXC? Uh, yeah, Pankaj, in fact, uh, we believe that you know the rise uh, in the last couple of days has been largely uh, triggered by the fact that uh, they have been conducting some uh, tests for driverless cars in Bangalore. And I think uh, the markets are very hopeful that if this materializes, then they could possibly compete and you know offer this kind of software to you know majors like Tesla or even Google who are actually trying out these kind of vehicles. Although this is a really long term kind of possibility, even the near term uh, possibility for the core business seems to be very strong because they are traditionally not a pure IT player, they are into uh, embedded services catered to the defense market. So uh, I would presume that you know whoever is buying this stock now should actually take a longer term view. Company is a cash rich company and I think definitely longer term returns can come in. Uh, Gorang, do you cover Tata Communication? That's up 3%. Any view on that? Motila Loswal has initiated coverage today with the buy. Maybe that's why it's up 3%. So, if you remember when the entire uh, saga started, uh, everybody had written off the entire Tata group uh, between uh, Ratan Tata, Cyrus Mystery and Tata Sons. We had held our positive view in some of the Tata group companies where we have positive coverage, including Tata Communications and Tata Chemicals wherein we have a positive coverage. And our sense is that uh, uh, there is going to be growth trajectory and of course with this entire focus of government on digital India, my sense is that uh, IT companies which are associated with uh, providing such services and products and platforms will definitely uh, do well in the longer run. Right. Uh, thank you so much gentlemen for joining us uh, this morning. But uh, just before we go, Gorang, let's uh, start with you. Any disclosures? Thank you, Pankaj. Uh, no personal investments in the stocks that have been recommended or discussed, but uh, we give similar recommendation to our clients. Avinash, disclosures for you? Yeah, Pankaj, uh, whichever stocks we mentioned on the show, uh, our clients may be having some positions, but uh, on a personal level, I don't own any of these stocks. Mr. Malkan, finally for you. Uh, no personal positions in the stock discussed today. Thank you so much, gentlemen.